welcome to uh, Let's Crosby Wrestling League Friday night. We are in uh, Boston, Massachusetts this week. Already in the ring, you saw Jabid and Homeless Joe. Coming out now, though, is Kick Bubblegum. He will be teaming for the first time with Freshmaker. The two of them were saying, hey, I can do flippy shit. And then, and then Freshmaker was like, I can do flippy shit too. And so they said, hey, let's let's be a tag team together. And so that's where we're at right now. They're not an official tag team. As you can see, they're not coming out together or anything crazy like that. But if they, uh, maybe if they have some good chemistry here tonight, maybe if they do well together as a team, maybe, just maybe, they'll stick together as the team of flippy shit. Um, of course, Homeless Joe, even though he's in this in this match, he still managed to fuck up uh, Freshmaker's music. The pyro still sounds. It's the only thing, though. We have no audio from the audience. We have no audio from Freshmaker's music. We only have pyro. See, there you go. Oh, there we go. Freshmaker has uh, suggested that if he likes teaming with Kick Bubble Gum tonight, that perhaps their tag team will be called Double Mint Gum. We will see. Like I said, they, they gotta start somewhere, and if they can't even beat Jabid and Homeless Joe, I don't see them being a tag team anytime soon. All right, let's get it going. We're ready for action. At least I'm ready for action, and away we go. Bubble Gum kicking the shit out of uh, Homeless Joe's leg there. Homeless Joe going down pretty quickly. And now they're kind of staring at each other. No, here we go, here we go. Kick Bubblegum. European uppercut, not a Japanese uppercut to Homeless Joe. And actually, um, Jabid not really helping out Homeless Joe even though they're in that corner. Jabid stepping down saying, no, I have on the... And I don't know why uh, Jabid is uh, Japanese, but that's fine. Holy shit. Speaking of Japanese, here goes Kick Bubble Gum. And Kick Bubble just stop the shit out of Homeless Joe. He probably caved in his chest. And oh, he went to drop kick Jabid, but he missed. And But instead, he does this crazy jump off the, the rope in, a, in, a, in a, like a 360 spin and landed on Homeless Joe, now just kicking him in the shin. Homeless Joe getting kicked down here. I don't even know that uh, Jabid or uh, Freshmaker will even make it into this match at this rate. Uh, Kick Bubblegum might just beat the shit out of Homeless Joe and might be done with it here. Looks like he's going to set him up with a Tornado DDT and he hits it. Homeless Joe's on Dream Street. Or I should say maybe he's having a nightmare on Elm Street. Either way, Jabid going for the crotch triple German suplex here. He hits it once. He hits it twice. Will it be three times just as nice? Yes, it will be. That could be it. That could already be it. This could be one of the quickest matches we've had in Let's Cross the Wrestling League. Uh, Freshmaker stopping the uh, tip. Yeah, there we go, already. <laughs> what a quick match. Freshmaker barely got to even do anything. Kick Bubblegum taking care of all the work on Homeless Joe. We have a very quick squash match to start out Friday night. If, uh, if this is an indicator of anything, you may as well just turn off your television or your computer right now because Jesus fucking Christ It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a doozy either way the new tag team of double mint gum Wins it here on Friday night As I said, we are in Boston anonymous jerk bag Coming out to ringside uh, For his match here against hood fabulous tonight both men have had mixed uh, mixed success here in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League. More, more unsuccess though for Anonymous Jerkbag than success, we must say. Anonymous Jerkbag, like I said, not not really making a big break for it. He, he he's got that kind of. Uh, I've said it week in and week out. He's got that uh, can't put the fucking match away itis disease that seems to spread in the back here. But Fabulous at least has one. The Let's Cross Wrestling League Hardcore Championship. Put uh, Anonymous does not have any gold to his name, at least not yet. But perhaps if he can beat Hood Fabulous tonight, he'll be in the running for the United States Championship. But he's got a long road to climb. 
I mean, mountain to climb, hill to climb, not a road. You don't climb roads, you drive on roads. And speaking of driving on roads, driving on out to ringside, uh, he is the former Let's Cross Wrestling League hardcore champion. He will bite you in the forehead and kick you in the dick. He is Hood Fabulous. And he's making his way to ringside. Or rather, to the ring. I keep saying, I always say ringside. But really, they're making their way to the actual ring, aren't they? They're not really, they're not, they're not just, they're not just going to stand outside the ring. They're going to get in the ring and they're going to fight. Mano e mano. One on one. Uh, Hood Fabulous. Anonymous jerk bag. Uh, I have nothing else to really say. I, I really don't. I have nothing to say over this entrance. I mean, you know, like I said, this is just kind of an exhibition match. This isn't anything. This isn't a tag match, or rather, a title match, or anything like that. We're just, we're just fighting. That's all. And we're doing it right fucking now. Put Fabulous and Anonymous both hooking up. Anonymous getting the upper hand right at the moment here, and now actually wrenching the arm and s sweeping down. Put Fabulous, Hood Fabulous. On the ground, kind of can't believe that uh, he was taken down like that. But now Anonymous hitting a neckbreaker on Hood Fabulous. Anonymous actually sh showing that he is here to fight. Though, maybe he's needed to slow his roll a little bit because uh, Hood Fabulous got overhand. But no, Hood Fabulous just got pushed down by Anonymous. Anonymous getting in position for something, dancing around, doing absolutely nothing. Though he turns Hood Fabulous around here. Grabs him, throws him against the uh, ropes, and then, oh, misses the, the clothesline and actually necks himself against the top rope. But Fabulous takes a moment to kick him in the back of the spleen or so, and then lifts him back up here. What could Hood Fabulous? Hood Fabulous looks like he's going to take Anonymous over to the ropes. And does not succeed in whatever his plans were as he gets dropped all the way down to the ringside. And Anonymous starting the attack. Anonymous throwing in some... Sharp elbows, a kick, and now another neck breaker right on the outside. Those those pads are not very thick out there. We can't afford a lot of pads, and our wrestlers don't have any insurance, so you know how it is. Either way, Hood Fabulous getting the shit kicked out of him right now and then dropped on the outside. This is rare form for not well, I wouldn't say rare form. Anonymous has shown himself very capable in a lot of matches. But like I said, he just never seems to get it get it going at the end and, and here's another mistake he's made he's took too long to kind of taunt but then again he's he's reversed to, uh hood fabulous here now look like he's gonna go for a package suplex no it looked like a package driver dropping hood fabulous on his neck and head anonymous now uh oh gonna go for that rolling thunder and he hits it i don't know if this is gonna be it but it could be close two. only a two count Anonymous can't believe it. He thought he had this one put away, but he should believe it because he has a hard time putting matches away. Meanwhile, Hood Fabulous now getting back into this, but only for a moment as he's reversed to a Russian leg sweep. Anonymous still in control here. He's been in control most of this match. Hood Fabulous, though, does hit a snapmare right there and then goes for a strong-armed headlock, wrenching at the neck and head of Anonymous. I don't think Anonymous is going to tap out, though Anonymous is the only wrestler in the Let's Cross Wrestling League that has ever tapped out, and that was to Knopel in a submission match. But I don't see him tapping out tonight, especially not when he's reversed out of it with elbows there. But Hood Fabulous turns Anonymous around, turns him around yet again. It looks like going for a suplex here. He lifts him up high, and no, it's a, well, that face buster of his planting Anonymous down. Right in, in, well, not the middle of the ring, but, you know, close. Either way, he punches him in the top of the head. Now, turning him around yet again. But letting Anonymous get up. Oh, and actually helping him up there. Before taking him towards the center of the ring. And hitting a spinning back body drop. Landing Anonymous on the top of his head. Anonymous now in trouble. That's what Fabulous is biting his head again. Or I should say again, that hasn't happened this match yet, but he... He does that bite thing, and now he's going to go for a pin. I'd hope Anonymous can kick out right here. And he does at two, but just barely. That bite, there must be something. Maybe uh, Hood Fabulous has some venom in his teeth or something. He puts wrestlers out with that move. But either way, he's now taking Hurricane Rana as Anonymous has finally shaken off some of the cobwebs, and it looks like he's back into this match here. 
He throws Hood Fabulous into the corner. Looks like he's gonna lift Hood Fabulous. Uh oh, he could be going for that spider suplex. We've seen this before. He hits that spider suplex and then he does his uh does his top rope finisher, and this could be it if he can nail this. Anonymous, he hits the five-star frog splash, he hooks the leg, this could be it! No, Hood Fabulous kicking out just in time. Anonymous again, not able to finish off Hood Fabulous just yet anyway. Hood Fabulous still has a chance as Anonymous spins him around a couple times here and goes, he f does a flippy thing and then hits a uh, death drop of sorts uh, uh, onto Hood Fabulous. Hood Fabulous now in trouble as his legs being yanked on. Uh, Anonymous trying to ground Hood Fabulous, even though Hood Fabulous doesn't really go to the top rope very often, if, if at all. But be that as it may, it's not a bad strategy. Anonymous kicks, but Fabulous headbutts him, punches, he could be setting him up for that double, uh, well, it's a drop kick, it's always double foot, but that running drop kick on the outside, and he nails it. It could be it if he could get in there and, and, and pin Hood Fabulous, this could be the end of the match. Anonymous could get a rare victory here. And that's it, Anonymous Jerkbag actually sealing the deal this time, winning a match. He will have uh, more matches in the future. He will face the winner of uh, the KTD versus Tax Genie match to determine, or to help determine the number one contender for the US title. But he's one step closer to capturing gold for the first time in his career in the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. And like I said, he was he was he was he was the underdog here. Hood Fabulous, much more decorated here, has has a better record. But Anonymous finally digging down deep, grabbing hold of his nuts. And uh proving everyone wrong. This was that spider suplex from the top, or spider German suplex, I should say. Then the five-star frog splash. This was not enough to get it done, though, unfortunately, for, well, I, I can't say unfortunately, he ended up winning anyway. But this this right here is what ended up uh, finishing off Hood Fabulous, this running drop kick. We've actually seen Anonymous get robbed in a match where he's done that running drop kick, and then another wrestler rolled in for the pin on a triple threat match so we know that this this move's deadly and devastating and sure enough it was tonight anonymous jerkbag wins it and he gets to go back and celebrate and now falling out of whatever hole he crawled out of this week it is olg he has a chance to prove himself to also stop Skate's undefeated streak here in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League. We'll see if he can get it done tonight. He's had a uh, rough a rough go of it lately, especially after dumping KTD as a tag team partner, which uh, during that match, that kind of, that I don't want to call it a blow-off match, but that match between KTD and Oelchi, KTD was victorious. And then I don't, th I don't know that OLG has really won since then. I think he's been on a losing streak since then. So if he's able to beat the undefeated Scaife tonight, that will certainly be a good way to, to fucking, I can't think or speak tonight. I just cannot fucking do it. I can't fucking do it. It'd be a good way to snap that losing streak is what I was trying to fucking say, but I'm too goddamn stupid. I'm too fucking stupid and I'm too fucking worthless as a human being to fucking talk. And now, coming out to the ring, his music is fucked up again. He is undefeated so far in Let's Cross the Wrestling League. He is the winner of the 30-man Battle Royal, and he has a guaranteed title shot, which I believe he will be cashing in at the next pay-per-view here in a few weeks. Will it be against Skyrim Jobs? We don't know. Thule has already stated that he does not want a rematch. He has... Uh, given up his rematch clause for the world title, so Skyrim Jobs does not have to worry about Tuli coming back. And therefore, uh, we've actually got a replacement for that title shot next week. 
we will actually see Lord Grubbins going up against Skyrim Jobs for the Let's Crosby Wrestling League world title. There was a vacancy, and the 1% sure as hell knows how to fill vacancies, and that's with money. So Grubbins will get his title shot against Skyrim Jobs next week. So Skyrim Jobs or Grubbins will be, you know, one, one, of the, one of the other, those two, will have to defend against Scaife in the upcoming pay-per-view, but that's not for a few more weeks. Now, we've had some tie-ups here. Both both times they've uh, broken clean here. Skyrim, or I say, OLG. Showing he is the stronger competitor, but Skaith was a little bit quicker there and taking a, uh, dropping him onto his boot. Well, G, though, reversing out of whatever Skaith was going for there. And now grabs Skaith quickly, throwing Skaith over into the corner. Hard, Skaith come reeling off of that, but is able to reverse and take OLG down. Skaith hits a spinning back body drop, dropping OLG on the top of his head. And now turns OLG over here. Gives him a good punch to the back of the head and a kick to the kidneys or so. And another kick to the back of the leg. Skaith lifts up Oelji. But Oelji able to get out of it and takes Skaith down to the mat. Oelji grabs Skaith. Goes for a flip here, but no. Skaith able to reverse and flip Oelji back out of it. Oelji has had a little bit of offense on Skaith, but Skaith has been a little bit quicker and a little bit more technical for the bigger and stronger Oelji. Well, G was, uh, took a few punches there, and now takes a European uppercut. Skate does now throw, does now throw a Welgy in the corner. That's not even English. Well, G, though, gets out of it with an elbow, but Skate's able to grab a Welgy. Looks like gonna go for a, uh, oh, fuck, why well, can't I think of that, the name of that goddamn move? Falcon Arrow. And then goes for a pin. I don't think this is gonna get much. I'll be surprised if he even gets a two. Oh, it does get a two count, but, uh, it's not gonna be that easy for Skate to take out a Welgy. Skaith, a little bit frustrated, goes and claws at the face, nose, and eyes of Oelji. Uh-oh, he turns him around. He's going to drop him on his fucking head here with that high angle pile driver. He's ended matches with that. He could end it right here. Oelji could already be done for. I think Oelji's made of tougher stuff, but we'll find out here. Yes, Oelji is able to kick out at two, but it does not fare well for him that Skate's already hit him with a signature move. You got to think that the uh, flashbang is only moments from happening if Oelji's not able to uh, be a little bit more careful here. Oelji, one of the things he learned from KTD is how to do Russian leg sweeps and he hits Skaith with one, but Skaith able to claw his way back up and does reverse that punch into an elbow. Skaith grabs Oelji, looks like going for another Falcon Arrow here. No, he just throws him to the side with that half effort suplex. And then grabs Oelji here, might be taking him over to, yep, takes him over to the ropes. And throws OLG all the way to the outside. Skaith now going off the ropes. Jumps over, grabs OLG, and then hits it with a DDT on the outside. OLG looks like he's out cold, but Skaith can't pin him out there. No, sir. But does hit a nice uh, chop to OLG's neck, and OLG bounced off the table there. OLG stops the kick, though, but oh, it's not able to stop that Enziguri. OLG was half there with that reversal, but couldn't get it all done. And now Skaith gonna, looks like going for a DDT to the foot and going after the knee and ankle there. We're up to a four count. Five. Both these men, neither of these men want to get counted out. And a double count out would be a really fucking way, lame way to end it. Skaith breaks the count though and hits a Welgy with a knee, uh, knee to the face. Welgy has not been able to get much done uh, for most of this match. Now Skaith taking a Welgy over. Where is he taking him though? I'm not even sure. Um, I don't think Skate knew, and I don't think Oelji knew, but either way, now Oelji having the, the, the opportunity to throw in a couple punches there, and actually is able to do a, a gut wrench slam onto Skate. We are now up to a five count. Oh, a six count. This could be a devastating loss for Skate if he loses by count out. We're up to a seven. Oelji was going to take it there if he could, but Skate was able to get back into the ring. Skate goes for a grab. Oelji able to get out of the way, and then. Oh, it looked like Skaith was going to go for a uh, scoop slam, but Oelji's able to reverse that. No, uh oh Oelji's pumping up and getting ready to do something here. Yeah, he hits the elbow. He hits the second elbow. He lifts up Skaith and slams him down with an Alabama slam. This could be the beginning of the end of Skaith. This could be what, uh, what like I said, what starts Skaith's uh, downfall as a competitor here. And uh oh here comes. Here comes the lucky Irish drop. 
And he nails Skate with it. This could be it. Well, she could snap his losing streak. Could snap Skate's winning streak. This could be all she wrote. A two count, and Skate is able to kick out. Oh, well, she can't believe it. But he would. Skate's not the first person to kick out of that move. And Skate's slowly getting back up. But Oelji grabbing him, lifting him, and dropping him right on his head. Oelji commanding this match now. And now going for. A, uh oh, he's going to go for the big swing here. This does not bode well for Skate. We've seen people get uh, disoriented and dizzy after taking this move. Skaith could be out now. This could be it. He rolls up the leg. Skaith looks dazed. He looks confused. He looks dizzy. And oh, that was almost a three. Skaith kicking out right as the arm was, the hand was coming down for the three count. OLG's though sitting pretty right now and is in definite control of throwing a headbutt into Skaith. This, like I said, this could be the beginning of the end for Skaith here. But OLG keeps this onslaught. Well, he's going for the knee. He does not go for the knee. That's actually wearing a, uh, a knee brace, though, oddly enough. But Skaith, like I said, is, is kind of on Dream Street here. Takes a uh, snapmare there down to the middle of the ring. And now Welji wrenching the neck back here, trying to get Skaith to tap out. But Skaith able to reverse out of it into a jawbreaker. Skaith actually hurts his head a little bit there. And but Welji quickly able to recover after that. Turns around, grabs Skate, throws him in the corner, hits a devastating clothesline. And then a kick to the back. Skate needs to do something here. Or else he's in trouble. He does. He's able to roll out of there, but OLG oh, was a little bit quicker there. I don't know if Skate's tired or what, but another big clothesline takes Skate down to the, the mat. And then another kick to the back. Looks at OLG's oh, playing uh, pretty smart here, and he's, he's able to. I said, oddly enough, out speed Skaith, even though he is he's, he's a much bigger competitor. He does grab Skaith. He lifts him up here and actually hits a rolling Samoan drop, but it does look like Oelji kind of has gassed himself a bit. But I would think that of the two, Skaith's definitely got to be the one hurting more. Oelji throws in another punch to Skaith and then throws his head back. Skate's got to do something here if he if he hopes to keep his undefeated streak going because this sure as hell isn't doing it. <laughs> Skate now lifted up by OLG. OLG could be getting ready for a uh, another move here. And, oh, Skate's cut off a couple times, but Skate's able to throw in a punch and daze OLG back to the ropes. Skate now jumping across and then oh, pull, pulling back OLG's neck and back across the top rope. Now Skate. Looks like going after that arm, which is a good, which is smart when you have a big guy like that to hit the arm and do uh, some uh, damage so he can't lift you up. Anyway, Skate throws Oelji in the corner. You can see both competitors are tired. Skate lifting Oelji to the top rope. And Skate throwing in a punch, hitting a back body drop. Skate situated on the uh, middle rope there. Oelji on the top, and Skate going for a pin here. I don't know that this is going to be enough, but it could be. He did drop a Oelji right on his head. And that's it? That is it! Skate somehow comes away with a fucking victory with a back body drop from the middle rope. I can only guess that Oelji's concussed or took a serious amount of damage from that back body drop. He did look like he landed on his neck in a, in a rough way. For most of that match, I mean, it, it was it was it was one-sided either way. Skate had a Welgy on the ropes, so to speak, for a while, and then after this series here, a Welgy was able to gain control and had pretty much full control for the second half of the match. So it was only a matter of time before which competitor could do the big move, and Skate was able to get that big move. Welgy almost had it. He almost stopped. Like I said, he almost stopped Skate's win streak. He certainly hit him with enough uh, finishers and signature moves. But as usual, OLG just was not able to get it done in the end. And we've seen that before. This is our first at least decent match of the evening. They were like right there. I thought that was it for Skate. And this, this was finally it right here. Skate was able to gain control just long enough. He grabbed OLG, punched him in the back of the head here. And watch the snap here. Just blams OLG right on the back of his head. And I think that was it. I think Oelji's out at this point. He's not moving. He is breathing, but he's not moving. 
He doesn't even have any attempt at kicking out. Scaife beats a Welgy and continues to be undefeated in the Let's Cross Wrestling League. And now, coming out to the ring, he's one third of the Iron Dogs, even though the other two members of the Iron Dogs kind of upset with Cad, blaming Cad for their loss of the tag titles last week at Event Horizon. There was a miscommunication on the outside as Cad, I think, was trying to help Exclamation up, and Exclamation jerked away from him or something and ended up hurting his arm. I don't know. It was something really fucking weird. Either way, he got ejected from ringside. And since he was ejected, he was not there to stop Kanopal and Gara from actually cheating and winning the tag titles. Either way, as a result, he does not have uh, Exclamation nor Overlord out here with him. Oddly enough, usually... One member of the Iron Dogs will accompany him to, to the matches. Not today. As, like I said, they're very pissed off that they do not have those belts right now. No, those belts belong to Gara and Knopel of the Fallen, the tag team champions. And they did come out together. So, Kads, it's not a handicap match, but it damn well nearly should be. Those were almost words. Fuck. As uh, undoubtedly, Gara will be a distraction on the outside as Cad tries to face Kanopal here. Cad has hard enough time winning matches as it is, let alone uh, <laughs> when he's got other things going on. And like I said, has nobody in his corner tonight. Cad's ready. Kanopal's ready. Kanopal definitely not only is a as uh, an excellent tag competitor but I believe is a better singles competitor than Cad so we'll see how it goes here Knopel kind of butt fucking Cad here in the middle of the ring and then lifts him up and slams him down Cad kind of trying to get away here and is able to throws throws a punch into Knopel Cad grabs Knopel and slams his face down into the mat you gotta think uh, Cad has definitely not been happy with his performance he was beaten incredibly easily by Baza at Event Horizon. Another reason that the Iron Dogs, the other two members, I should say, of the Iron Dogs are uh, disappointed with Cad. Not only do they think that he's one of the reasons they lost the tag titles, but he was unable to even get another title for the Iron Dogs in the U.S. Championship. So, um, right now, at least for this, this, this week, he's not got any friends. Cad swept down on the uh, mat here by Knopel. Knopel trying to get something going here, but Cat able to reverse out of it and hits a shoulder block. Tries to lift up Knopel, but Knopel hits a back body drop to Cad. Cad going down pretty hard. Knopel pulls Cad away from the ropes here. Is he going to go for a pin? No. Goes for an elbow drop, actually. And now lifts Cad back up, or at least halfway back up. Throws in a punch to the back of Cad's head, and then another punch back across his kidneys. Cad now being lifted up here by Knopel. Knopel just brute strength here. Lifts Cad up and slams him down. I won't say effortlessly because he definitely was strained in there. And, but, oh, Cad actually able to sweep the leg from Knopel. At least for a moment. But Knopel back in charge. Hits Cad with another back body drop. Cad has really not done much this match. Um, which is usually the story. Cad's punched in the back of the head by Knopel. Knopel lifting Cad up again. Might be going for, yep, going for that double axe handle. Or axe hammer, axe hammer, 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 hammer. Either way, rolls Cad over, goes for a pin. Gets a two count. Cad able to kick out. Cad, though, takes a knee to the back of the head. Knopel lifts him back up here. But Cad's able to kind of jump in and hit a uh, snap mirror. Now goes for a headlock. Trying to wear Knopel down. Knopel. I don't think he's going to tap out anytime soon. He's the only person to ever make anyone tap out in Let's Cause the Wrestling League. So Cad better watch out. Yeah, he doesn't want to be in there. Now Cad lifts up Knopel again, slammed him back down again, and now kicks him in the back of the leg. Cad lifts up Knopel. Picks him up, but does not get anything going as Cad gets DDT'd to shit and back. And now, uh-oh, Knopel 
Going to the top rope, could be going for a splash here. And he hits it. This could be it for Cat already. He's lost quicker before, like we saw last week against Baza, but no, Cat was able to kick out. Knopel can't believe it. But Cat is holding on, if just barely. Cat kicks Knopel in the stomach, but gets kicked in the stomach in return twice. Three times now. Knopel grabbing Cad, throws Cad into the ropes, and hits him with one hell of a clothesline. Cad looks pretty dazed here, kicks the knee out from Knopel. Kind of turns around, able to pick up Knopel, and uh-oh. Lifts him up here, and drops Knopel right on his head. I think that's one of Cad's new signature moves. And then goes for the pin. Only gets a one count, though. Cad can't believe that Knopel kicked out so quickly, but fuck, what has Cad even done this match to wear down Knopel? Not a whole lot, so it's not that much of a surprise that Knopel kicked out so quickly. Cad turns around and grabs Knopel again. Throwing Knopel into the corner, kicks Knopel, headbutts, punches. Looks like he could be going for the same move that Anonymous won his match with earlier tonight. He's lining up Knopel here for that drop kick. He runs, and he hits it. I don't know if that's going to be enough, though. As, like I said, he's not done a whole lot of offense to Knopel. Ref counting it. Only a two count as Knopel is able to kick out. Cad's frustrated. Was hoping for, uh, to, to put Knopel away here, but I think Cad's got to do a lot more work before Knopel's going to go down. Cad hits Knopel with another back body drop, landing Knopel on his head there. And now Cad taunting Knopel, yelling at him or something. He's able to turn Knopel around, hits him with a, a quick punch that uh, puts Knopel against the ropes here. Cad now draping Knopel against the middle rope, throws in a punch, runs over and hits him right in the head with that running knee. And now Cad gets back in the ring. Cad stomps on the uh, midsection of Knopel a couple of times before lifting Knopel back up. Cad grabs Knopel, throws him over the top rope here. Kind of stares at him for a minute, not able to get anything going as Knopel headbutts him. Goes, rolls up. This could be it if Cad can't get out of this roll up. Oh, I thought that was it. Cad actually able to kick out right in the nick of time. We've seen uh, Tuli actually beat Knopel with a, with, a, with a roll up move to retain the title back a couple weeks ago. And Cad actually able to roll out of the way there as Knopel tried to stomp on him. The Cat is back in the ring. It was enough, though, to get Knopel distracted. This cat, oh, it looked like he was going to go for a fisherman suplex, but uh, got reversed there by Knopel. Now Knopel hooking both arms. Might be going for a, uh, oh, looked like he was possibly going for some sort of double underhook suplex, but Cat able to reverse that into a clothesline and then goes for a quick pin. One, two, Trying to catch Knopel off guard, but no, we'll only get two. Cat. Hits a drop kick to the back of Knopel's head there. And now tells Knopel to get up. But Knopel can't hear him, I don't think. Oh, maybe it does. He takes Cat right back down to the mat. And stomps on the... Well, he stomped on the midsection of Cat, but Cat grabbed his knee. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Either way, Knopel... Oh, looked like he was going to go for something, but actually got taken down by Cat in the reverse. But kicks Cat in the stomach. Cat now. Dragged around to the middle of the ring here and eats a neck breaker from Knopel. Knopel getting around to the feet of Cat. No, he's getting out of the ring. Uh-oh. Knopel could be setting something up at the table here. We've seen this before. It's usually a cock tease, especially since Knopel has forgotten what he was doing and gets back in the ring. Jesus fucking Christ. Cad kicks Knopel in the stomach here, but Knopel returns the favor. Cad returns the favor right back, grabs Knopel in the middle of the ring, Throws Knopel into the uh, ring there, but oh, gets reversed and Cad takes, goes head first in that top turnbuckle. Now Knopel hooking the arms again, lifts up Cad and drops him on his back. Actually connected with that this time. And, uh oh, Knopel could be going here for his finisher. Did that that Knopel salt from the top rope. He's lining up Cad. He's taking a little bit too long. He's kind of letting Cad get regrouped there, but no, I think that's it. I think that's all she wrote. Knopel hit all of that. And he's put people away before with that. No! Somehow, Cad kicks out at two. Unbelievably. I thought that was going to be it. It's, it's taken less to take out Cad. Oh, here we go. 
Canopo, oh. Well, Canopo was going to set something up, and Cad started crawling away. So Canopo had to improvise there with a punch to the back of the head. Now Cad trying to climb his way back up to his feet. Buck takes a headbutt once he turns around there. Jesus Christ. Canopo drapes Cad across that middle rope, but Cad rolls out of the way, but takes a kick to the stomach. Canopo's just, oh, here it goes. Here's Canopo's finisher here, the Canopo driver. And he hits it. Cad's done. Well, thanks for trying, Cad, but another week and another loss for you. As is the story of Cad's career here in the Let's Cause Wrestling League, because I don't think he's going to kick out of that. Oh, fuck me, he did. I thought that was, I was ready to call it there. And Canopel actually missing that flip move. Cad able to get out of the way. Grabbing Canopel, see if he can get anything done, you know, maximize out of that. He lifts Canopel up, and nope, Canopel able to reverse with the knee to the head. Canopel grabs Cad, but Cad able to reverse into a Russian leg sweep. Taking Canopel down in the middle of that ring. And now Cad looks like he's trying to set up Canopel possibly for the go to sleep. He's got him up. And he nails it. Canopel's got to be down. He could be out. This could be it for Cad unless Gara interferes, which he might. Cad rolls up the leg, goes for the pin here. And no, Canopel kicks out at two and did not need Gara's interference to do so. Cad has to be thinking, what more can he do to try to win? Maybe, you know, win his, his way back into favor with the other members of the Iron Dogs. And beating Knopel certainly will help with that. And uh-oh, there's the spin kick. He throws Knopel to the ropes, hits the first drop kick, hits the second drop kick. He ducks under that, and he hits the big neck breaker there. He lifts up Canopel and now starts cranking at the head and neck of Canopel. Cad's had a surge of energy here, and it could be what he needs to uh, win this match if he just capital uh, capitalizes, but he's just watching Canopel and misses that grab. He's nowhere near him. And now Canopel turns around and kicks Cad in the face, punches Cad in the face, say, but Cad is able to uh, get control only for a second there as Canopel throws him down on the mat and then goes for the pin. Only a two count. As both men slowly getting up to their feet. Canopel, uh oh, he's gonna go for that Canopel driver again. And that's gotta be all she wrote. I can't see Cad kicking out of that twice. I cannot see Cad kicking out of that twice. Canopel drags Cad away from the ropes just to be sure. And this has to be it. There's no way Cad's kicking out of that one. There's one, there's two, and there's three. What? I thought that was three. I thought the ref hit the map, but he's saying no, that he didn't, uh, that Cat was able to kick out right before the ref was, was counting for three there. But like I said, it may it may just be, uh, you know, the inevitable is still gonna happen here is Canopel hits Cat with a series of moves. That usually spells the beginning of the end for a lot of competitors. And here comes the thumb spike, and Cad's down. That could be it. That was a quick pin there. One, two, and three. Jesus Christ, Cad still kicks out somehow. Cad sure as fuck trying his hardest. I mean, he's gotta try a little bit harder to put Canopel out. But he's trying hard not to just lose. Canopel dropping Cad with that uh, Smolen drop there. Now, oh, Knopel's going to the top rope. Might be going for that Knopel, uh, whatever the fuck he calls it, flip. Again. He's, uh oh! Cat catches it with the super kick! And then turns him over and goes for the pin! And Gara interrupts the referee and says, no, dude. You can't count it yet. Cad could have had that one right there. He's won with that move before. But Gar was able to stop the referee from making the count. And unfortunately for Cad, we won't know if that was gonna be enough. And now Gar, now Canopel's back in charge. I mean, Cad could have just been robbed right there of this match by Gara. And it's it, it's not be be below the fallen to cheat to win. We, we saw it before and we'll see it again. But Cad's back in charge here, lifting up uh, Canopo and going for a neckbreaker off the top rope. 
But Canopel able to quickly get control back of this match. Hits a shoulder block, goes for a pin here. Only a two count. And now both men slowly both getting to their feet at the same time. But Canopel able to grab Cad before Cad could do anything. And this hits a very devastating power bomb to Cad. Canopel going back to that top rope again. This time, though, I think he's going to hit it. I can't imagine Cad springing up again. Canopel, I don't know what he's waiting for here. He's judging the distance. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Oh, he just hits with a uh, with an elbow, actually. And now going back to the top rope again. Maybe Cad. Maybe he thought Cad wasn't in the proper area here. And now, oh, hitting that big splash. Ref's gonna count again. We'll see if Cad can kick out this time. Nope, that is it. Cad loses yet again. Again, we won't know if uh, he could have won this with that super kick from the top rope because Gara got inter interfered. The Fallen have fallen into dirty tricks, much like the 1%, but they are the tag team champions. And uh, Cad again, like I said, showing again that he might not have what it takes to even compete in the Let's Cross Your Wrestling League. As he can't fucking win to save his life. Canopel doing far more of the offense, to be fair. I mean, even without Gara's help, Canopel was beating the shit out of Cad for the majority of this match. And we'll just put Cat on suicide watch, make sure he doesn't hang himself in the closet of the locker room, and keep all uh, razor blades away from him. I don't think um, the other members of the Iron Dogs are going to be talking to him anytime soon. You know, he was out here to try to avenge the Iron Dogs in some way, but was unable to do so. This was that, that was the final splash. It took a lot to, to keep Cat down, but... In the end, Cad loses yet again. Canopel of the Fallen wins. And it's another victory against the Iron Dogs. And now, making her way all the way from Russia. She is shown to be a capable competitor. And if she can beat Taxi Genie tonight, she will face Anonymous Jerkbag next week to help continue uh, determine the number one contendership for the uh, United States title. But she has to get through Taxi Genie first with boob physics and everything. It's odd that she has boob physics, but Taxi Genie has almost just as big boobs and does not have boob physics. Figure that one out. Either way, like, Taxi Genie's gonna have one hell of a match in front of him. Taxi Genie's actually lost the last couple of matches. He had a strong beginning here. And he sure is fuck gonna run right out to ringside. Right immediately, there he goes! And his music's fucked up. His music's fucked up. He doesn't care though. I don't I don't know that he yeah, he doesn't give a shit. He likes to run towards the ring. He likes to run back and forth. He likes to shake that rope. He likes the pyro going off in his face. KTD is going over there. Okay, I thought KTD was going to punch him in the dick, but no. No, KTD is a little bit more honorable than that. As Taxi Genie shakes that rope again, the pyro is going off. Everyone's going crazy. Taxi Genie is going crazy. He needs this victory to get back in the swing of things and get back in the U.S. title race. But the Russian hammer, KTD, is going to stand in his way. Taxi grabs KTD, throws her against the ropes here. Lifts KTD up and slams her down with that spine uh, bind buster. Immediately. Pulls KTD away from the ropes and actually just goes for a pin right away. Not even a one count. KTD kicked out before the ref could even get down to make a count. I think Taxi's uh, really desperate for a win here if he's going to try that quickly. As uh, But KTD, so far getting the shit kicked out of her. from Taxi Genie. Taxi lifts KTD back up here. And uh, KTD has not, like I said, not has, done, has done any offense. Taxi Genie's just been a one-man wrecking show. Wrecking show? Is that a thing? I don't know. Either way, he's been wrecking the shit out of KTD. But KTD actually reversing into a lariat there. 
And kicks Taxi Genie across the chest. Grabbing Taxi Genie, throwing Taxi Genie against the ropes here. But Taxi Genie able to reverse into a arm drag. Taxi Genie. Well, I was going to say it does something, but gets actually fireman carried by KTD. KTD went for something, but Taxi Genie was able to counter into a punch to the back. And throws a couple punch. Oh no, throws yeah, threw a couple punches. Only landed one as KT was able to reverse. Grabs Taxi Genie, takes him to the middle of the rope, and it's a string and throws him down. With a with a firm and serious push. KTD sets things up here, does a uh, cartwheel into a backflip, or a moonsault, rather. And she nailed all of that. Now kicking at the back of uh, Taxi Genie's knees. Taxi Genie kicks KTD right in the face to reverse out of that. Tax Genie grabbing KTD. Mm, does nothing with it. Now, as you can see, Tax Genie not apprehensive at all whatsoever about fighting or beating on a woman. He is Indian after all. Tax Genie takes one vicious neckbreaker there from KTD. KTD picks up Tax Genie. Oh, was going for a scoop slam. I'm surprised she has that much strength to lift up the very girthy and flabby. Uh, <laughs> Taxi Genie, but she did it. I mean, she does have Russian blood pumping through that body, and Russians are just abnormally strong. KTD stomped on by Taxi Genie. Taxi lifts KTD up, but is unable to do anything as Taxi Genie is hit with a fireman's carry. KTD goes for that scoop slam again, but, K but Taxi Genie able to get out of it and reverses into a German suplex. Taxi Genie still in control. Taxi Genie's held. Uh oh, going for the taxi driver already. He nails it. This could be all she wrote for KTD already. I was just about to say, Tax Genie has controlled most of this match. One, two. Oh, almost. Only a two count, though, as KTD is able to get out of it. Tax Genie, though, a little bit frustrated, throws a knee to the back of KTD's head before flipping KTD back around. KTD really needs to wake up here and get into this match if she has any hope of winning. Tax Genie lifts KTD up. Stalling Brain Buster, dropping KTD right on her head. Taxi Genie going for something, but eats uh, the top of KTD's head for breakfast, but throws in a kick, but gets a kick in return. KTD hits that. Uh, her and Kenrana there. Taxi Genie didn't get draped across the ropes, but he still went face first into the mat, so KTD turns Taxi Genie around, goes for a pin here. The first pin that KTD has made this match only gets a one count, as she has not done much offense. This match so far. She throws a knee into the back of Taxi Genie. Uh-oh. Might be setting Taxi Genie up for that spin kick here. Taxi Genie. Dazed. Oh. Gets grazed by the spin kick. But does not feel the full force of it. So Taxi Genie still stayed on his feet. But then just took a Hern Kenrana there. Or Hern Kenrana. I'm sorry. Yeah, Inziguri. KTD turns Taxi Genie around. Um, picks a corner here. But, but it looks like Taxi Genie able to get up. Quicker than KTD can climb and punches at KTD, but KTD throws a nice strong punch. Oh, and but misses the leg drop as Taxi Genie is able to get up and KTD takes all of that fully in the ass, on the ass. KTD, oh, went to turn around, but gets choke slammed by Taxi Genie. Taxi Genie now, uh oh, setting up KTD here for a spear, I think. Yes! Taxi Genie hitting all of it. Going for the pin, this could be it. No, KTD able to kick out just at two. KTD, like I said, needs to fucking get into this match if she has any hope of winning and staying in the United States title race. But she's not gonna do that if she keeps getting her shit kicked out of him, out of him, out of her by him, by Taxi Taxi. Taxi getting hit in the back of the head there, KTD grabbing Taxi. Pulling him towards the center of the ring, getting and kicking him and hitting a nice flipping neck breaker onto Taxi Genie. KTD picks up Taxi Genie yet again here. And goes for that Hurricane Rana again. Taxi Genie goes down hard and quick. KTD pulling Taxi Genie away from the ropes. Might be going for a pin here. I don't know what she's gonna get out of it. Maybe a two count? One, two. Yep, just a two count. KTD though now raking at the eyes and and, and knows the tax team, but tax team able to reverse, throwing in a punch to her side. Lifts or tries to lift up KTD. KTD throwing in a couple of punch, three punches into the face of Taxi Genie, right square on the bridge of the nose. But Taxi Genie reversing into a Russian leg sweep his, on his, his own to the Russian KTD. Man, I cannot fucking talk tonight. 
Tex Genie hitting a vicious snapmare onto KTD and now goes for a, uh, a, st a neck stretch. I, I can't remember what the fuck this is called. Where you grab the chin and then you, you go for something here. But either way, it looks like KTD grabbing the little bit of hair that Tex Genie has and able to get out of that. KTD looks tired and worn out. Both those things mean the same thing. And now KTD goes for, looks like going for, oh, hits the Famouser actually on the Taxi Genie, but she is tired. I mean, she's been gotten beaten on this whole time. So I'm not surprised that she's a little bit tired. She lines up, Taxi Genie drives the knee right into Taxi Genie's head and Taxi Genie has been busted open by that move. KTD must have some really sharp fucking knees. She spins around and hits that vicious neck breaker. Kind of a reverse neck breaker. The vodka twist onto Taxi Genie. Goes for the pin. And that's it! Holy shit, what a surprise out of nowhere. The fucking, the Russian twist does it. I mean, the vodka twist does it. It was actually the beginning of the match here. You can see how quickly Taxi Genie went for that pin. He grabbed KTD, hit her, hit her with a spine buster, and then he immediately went for a pin. Now, after dragging her away from the ropes. And then the ref goes to count, not even a one count. Thanks for that replay. Either way, Tax Genie, I think this is, might be where he hit the taxi driver. Yep, he picks up KTD and slams her down with the taxi driver. This was one of the one of the times I thought, look at the dazed look on KTD's face. Uh, this could have been it. Taxi got two out of it. KTD able to kick out. Here's where she grazed and missed that that spin kick there, which could which which I thought was going to cost her the match. And then finally this, right here, the, the vodka twist nails it, and it was enough. I mean, Casey, uh, Taxi was already hurt, bleeding from the head profusely. And that that neck wrench, reverse neck breaker fucking ended it. KGD wins it and will be fighting Anonymous Jerkbag next week. And the road to the US title. And now, making their way down. Uh, or making his way down, rather, is Space Tomato. He will not have the assistance of Grubbins. As with hardcore matches, managers are barred from ringside just to make sure things are a little bit fair, even though there are no rules, so I guess Grubbins could run out at any time and help Tomato, but whatever. Either way, Space Tomato, like the 1% does, bought his way into this match for the Hardcore Championship. I'm surprised he wants to go for this title as, I mean, it's a relent, when you win it, it's relentless. The title defenses. So I can't imagine that it's something someone like Tomato would want, but I think he just wants any gold he can get in the Hardcore title. Although the hardest to defend might be one of the easiest to win. You're fighting a competitor that the previous week was in a Hardcore match. And you have a chance each week to get this title. Every every week this title is defended. And the current champion coming down to ringside. His first gold is the hardcore championship, which he wears proudly around his waist. He showed that he could do it with the Olympics. And he showed he could do it in the Let's Cause Wrestling League. He is Steve Butavi. And his pyro is gone. <laughs> because that's how it works here. <laughs> Fuck me. Steve Butabi pumping himself up, getting ready to defend that title against Space Tomato. Space Tomato, as much as I badmouth the one percent and their and their tactics, Grubbins and Space Tomato are both very good wrestlers and very good competitors and very good at uh, at wrestling and competing. So, I mean, I, I shit can them a lot because, well, they're shitty people, but. They can handle themselves in a match. So, Butabi's not going to have some easy match here um, against Tomato. And that's what it's there for, that hardcore championship. Tomato ready to go. Butabi defiant. We are ready to go here. Butabi grabbing Tomato right away. Lifting him up without any effort whatsoever and dropping that knee across his own knee. Now, this is an extreme rules match. So all weapons and, and everything is uh, is perfectly legal. 
pinfalls and submissions do have to take place in the middle of the ring and uh, tomato actually already going for a Boston Crab now I don't I do not believe there are any rope breaks um, you know extreme rules match but like I said the match does have to be settled in the ring so this is not false count anywhere it's only gonna be a matter of time for one of these competitors goes for a weapon but until then we're gonna have some good old-fashioned wrestling here as Butabi able to get things going but does get kicked in the face right away tomato grabbing Butabi's knee and driving it into the mat and kind of taunting and yelling down at Butabi Butabi responds by pushing tomato down with both legs and kind of studies tomato oh, like waiting for to do something there misses the punch though and tomato's able to grab Butabi throwing him against the ropes and hitting a huge big boot knocking Butabi down but only for a second Butabi's able to get back up but takes a couple punches but then is able to fire him and carry the big girth of tomato tomato thrown back against the ropes here Butabi going around tomato and hitting a German suplex Jesus Christ and now Butabi actually the first man to go out for a weapon I'm surprised I thought uh you know tomato would be the first and uh oh there's a kendo stick oh Jesus Christ tomato just disappeared as he was beaten with that kendo stick hit twice and then uh Butabi actually just throws it down I think he just wanted to make a message there I don't know he lifts up tomato though and hits with a big sit down scoop slam partially onto that kendo stick and now grabs the arm but tomato able to fight out of it here and throws a hard forearm into the face of Butabi and now a big clothesline taking Butabi down now there are no count outs by the way I know you I shouldn't have to tell you that but I know there's some of you at home sitting there going hey why aren't they being counted out you and then I'm like you idiot there are no count outs in, in extreme rules matches either way Butabi lifting up tomato and just powering him down onto the mat Butabi wants to show that winning that title wasn't just some sort of fluke that he can defend it and he can uh stay up there with the best of them in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League. But he's going to have to go through Tomato and retain that title tonight to prove it. Tomato, like I said, no easy customer, even if he does have the advantages of the 1%. Tomato narrowly avoids being scoop slammed there, but does get an elbow to the face and a punch. But Tommy hits a nice European uppercut before turning Tomato over and driving a uh, elbow into the spine. Tomato now lifted up by Butabi. Butabi turns Tomato around here and goes for a half Nelson suplex. Tomato holding his head. Now Butabi giving him some shit talk right back. And then another elbow drop to the lower spine. And another one. And another one. Tomato is in trouble here if he can't get things going. Butabi grabbing and throwing Tomato far over his head I cannot believe the strength that Butabi possesses Jesus Christ but he gets punched in the stomach and in the face but Butabi just catches the, the hand of Tomato and slaps him right across the face for doing a double underhook throw onto the kendo stick Tomato is getting the shit kicked out of him by Steve Butabi out there Butabi showing him how to wrestle and showing him that he knows what the fuck is up with everything and Jesus Christ tomato is I don't know what to make tomato needs to really get back into this match because Batabi is kicking the ever living piss out of him tomato now taking on no onto the fucking stairs oh I think he hit his head on the stairs we didn't hear the stairs but I'm pretty sure he hit his head on the stairs Butabi is relentlessly just beating <laughs> the shit out of tomato throwing tomato up against the apron there not once but twice <laughs> oh my god I'm sorry I don't mean to have so much joy in my voice as I watch this I just think it's hilarious how badly Tomato's getting the shit kicked out of him by Steve Butabi Tomato actually able to finally reverse out of it and throw a elbow into the throat and now a leg drop to Butabi in the ring Tomato now taunting doing his pledge to Donald Trump I don't think he should be so cocky after the ass kicking he just took on the outside, but he is in control at the moment. He throws Butabi into the other corner and it's a big splash. Lifting up Butabi might be going for the snake eyes here. Yes, he hits it. Tomato goes off of the ropes and hits a big boot, knocking down Butabi. Goes off the ropes again, hits a huge leg drop. Uh oh. 
if Batavi's not careful, this could be the beginning of the end here. And oh, here comes the choke slam. He lifts up Batavi high and slams him down. And now going for the pin. Batavi kicking out just barely right after two. Space Tomato can't believe it despite, like I said, Space Tomato not doing a whole lot in this match thus far. Um, Batavi turned around though, getting a quick punch into Space Tomato. And now lifting up Space Tomato with a snap suplex. Tomato going down hard. Butabi slowly lifting up Space Tomato. No, Space Tomato able to sweep the leg and stay up on this match. Now, uh oh, Space Tomato getting ready for his finish. It could be that lift up uh, European. Uh, yeah, there it is. There's the Europe. Oh my God, that drop European uppercut is devastating. He goes for a quick pin, and that could be it. No, Butabi is still the champion as of right now, able to kick out. Tomato can't hold that goal just yet. He's gonna have to do a little bit more work. Butabi though, looks like he's days trying to climb out of it and is now getting his knees hammered over by Tomato with a couple kicks. Tomato going for the knees again, driving it into the middle of the ring there. Lifts up Butabi once again, hits him with a uh, snapmare and then goes for a headlock. You know, Tomato's probably wanting to slow this down a little bit. He's not got as much stamina as Butabi, but Tabi actually able to get out of this here, throwing in a couple levels to the big beefy bread basket of Space Tomato, but Space Tomato able to grab Butabi before Butabi can capitalize on it and kind of holds him into his pit sweat. Butabi though, didn't like it. Oh God, but gets punched in the face anyway. And now Tomato grabbing Butabi, lifting him up, but Butabi giving out of it, hold, sweeps the leg again, kind of, drives his face into the mat and now goes for a pin. Butabi gets a two count. I think, was that the first time Butabi's actually even tried to pin Tomato this match? I mean, most of the match is taking place on the outside, so it wouldn't surprise me. Butabi grabs Space Tomato, and he hits the Olympic Slam out of nowhere. That could be it. He rolls rolls up Tomato. The referee's got to get in position here. And, oh, no. Tomato able to kick out right at two. Butabi. Cannot finish Tomato that easily. Tomato takes a nice kick to the back of the head and now a kick to the back of the leg. Butabi tries to turn Tomato around but gets kicked in the face instead. Tomato then throws in a huge punch. Another uh, huge punch. Reverses into a third punch. Turns Butabi around. Lifts him up with that another choke slam and slams Butabi to the mat and then goes for the pin. Butabi though. Able to stay in this one. He kicks out at two. Tomato just wants to finish this one. Finish Butabi and become the champion. But he's going to need to do a lot more damage here. Butabi writhing around in pain after being dropped on Tomato's knee. And now, uh oh, here we go. Tomato's setting up Butabi again. This could be it. He lifts up Butabi and drops him down with that vicious... European uppercut. This could be it. We could have a new champion here. No, Butabi kicking out at two at 99 one hundredths of a count, but it wasn't three. Tomato is very pissed off. He's throwing in the stomps to the lower back of Butabi as a result of being so pissed off. He then throws Butabi against the ropes here, but Butabi able to reverse into an elbow and oh, went for a drop kick to the knee, but Tomato was able to get out of the way. Tomato grabs Butabi, lifts him up, and drops him on his knee. And now is kind of tired. Tomato, assessing the situation, goes for another quick pin here, trying to put this one away, but only gets a two count. Tomato a little frustrated, trying to figure out what he needs to do to win the championship here against Steve Butabi. I'd say even if Batabi doesn't stay champion, he still has pr proven himself here as a top tier competitor. And he grabs, he gets around, grabs Space Tomato. Uh-oh, he's going for the triple German suplex. He hits it first time. His, his skin is melding into, or, or, or getting caught underneath the fat of Tomato or something there. Three German suplexes. He folds up Space Tomato like a fucking accordion, turns him around and goes for the pin here. But Tomato able to kick out at two. Butabi's tired, Tomato's tired, both men are tired. They haven't used any weapons, really. They've used that kendo stick a little bit, but this, even though this is a uh, extreme rules match, the uh, weapons have not really been utilized, surprisingly. 
And uh-oh, but Tommy might be setting up Tomato for another Olympic slam. If he hits it, it could be it. Tomato's dazed. And he gets the full brunt of the Olympic slam. He rolls the leg. This could be it. That's it. Mutabi retains the hardcore championship. He shows he's not just some fly-by-night champion, that he deserves to be champion. His skill was tested tonight. Tomato had quite a few opportunities to win this one. He almost did a few times, but I think the ass-kicking he took on the outside early on in the match kept him from uh, winning this. I don't know. And also, Butami kicked out of two of those uh, European uppercuts. Some big boots, some choke slams. And in the end, Butabi was able to hit his second Olympic slam onto Space Tomato, which is what finished it off. There was a close one right there. This is the, this is the beginning of the end of Tomato. This was the triple German suplex here. There was two, and here comes the third one. And he nails every bit of it, folds up Tomato. I thought that could have been it. He went for the pin, but Tomato was able to kick out at two. But it was only waiting for uh, this one right here. After that fireman's carry, Futabi studies Tomato, gets right into position, turns him around, hits him with the second Olympic slam. And that was all she wrote for Space Tomato or, or Space Tomato's dreams of becoming hardcore champion tonight. Steve Futabi puts down Space Tomato. He retains the hardcore championship and we'll see you next week on Let's Crosby Wrestling League Friday night.